today we all we are, we're going to talk about uh, uh simplicity because you know what it doesn't matter if you if you can do scalable things it doesn't matter if you can save money if this is so complicated that there's no way that you can do it right so we want to make this very easy for you we want to discuss uh how we can do this thing sim in a simpler way uh in the cloud and so to do that to get started with this let me bring us uh, our main host uh and the ceo of jelaski ruslan sinitsky hey ruslan good to have you here man hello bruno good to talk to you and i'm happy to see many people joining and many people came from the previous sessions so i'm very glad uh, today we will talk about next level uh, like simplicity and actually this one contains both because like you can scale yourself with simplicity like i mean like you alone you can do as much as many other people together like and if you if you have uh, right tools and also it's also about efficiency so because simplicity drives efficiency you, you remember like your time is the most expensive thing in the world so you want to get job done fast and uh, in efficient way so today it's like we combine two things uh, in one but we talk specifically about um, simplicity how to achieve uh, results faster like what kind of tools can help you to get this done so and i'm glad this um, i'm really happy to see many people are joining us today good and uh, in addition um, uh, we will have very uh, great guest uh, today um, we our long time customer uh yanis actually and let me introduce yanis bruno can you uh, add yanis to the okay okay I don't hear you. Okay, now you can hear me, right? <laughs> yes, okay, exactly. So before, yeah, before you introduce Yanni, so, so you know, so I, I love what you just said, Ruslan, because mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about uh scaling, when we talk about scalability, the, the, the most expensive thing that we have is actually not mm -hmm. the infrastructure, right? I mean, this the infrastructure is just, just money that you're paying, right? But you know, it's the people right. that you have, you know, the people in your team, your your skills that you have, uh, and the knowledge that you have. Uh, inside your team so the more you can you can uh, you know you can scale you can make th those that team very very successful and you can make that team uh, uh you know very productive the better it is right correct yes exactly so you can again like you can scale your team you can scale yourself uh, without the need to hire like extra people like people are good but look uh, sometimes you know like the most difficult thing is to work with people honestly like because like people are different like you know you need to find uh, you need to know like how to work with different people to give them tasks like to you know to explain how it works like and control this task and so on like so but uh, and actually people are the most expensive things like because as i mentioned their time is, uh, is the most expensive thing in the world and um yeah like and making uh, things simple and uh, having right tools so you can move faster in a uh, cost efficient way so and today we will talk about this very exciting. yeah and, and, and the, the interesting thing is that uh, you know look there's no way out guys there's no way out i mean if you're not doing the, the uh, if you're not in the cloud right now if you're not moving things in the cloud you have to remember right that's you know so far you could uh not do things in the cloud if you want to right but but moore's law is coming to an end right so that means that there's no way for you to, to get more performance in your application but you know in the past right we could have you know we all oh, we just throw more hardware at it right you know we get a new hardware so it's faster so all we need every two years we can just make our applications faster without much work but that's gonna go away right you know moore's law uh some people are saying that moore's law is gonna end this year right 2020 because of economic reasons it's not going to be more economically reason to keep to keep pushing it forward but even if Moore's law continues you have to remember that since 2006 the performance of a single trad has you know this low down and has pretty much plateau right now so that means that a single trad application is not going to be faster by buying new processors right so what that means is that either you have more cores more threads more processors more computers or nothing's going to happen so cloud is fundamental so we have to do this there's no way out and so that's why we want you to to to, to scale your application to the cloud we want you to, to save money to run things in the cloud without spending too much money 
and we want you to do this with simplicity. So that's why the, our third class today. So, and as Ruslan was talking about, we have an awesome guest here, Ruslan. So who is our guest? So our guest is Yanis. Uh, uh, Yanis uh, developed his first personal website in 1992. And the next year, he started a very ambitious project uh, on the Greek internet. That was the first music hub for independent artists in Greece. And actually, it was one of the first uh, worldwide. Uh, it was like mp3.gr. And in 2004, uh, Yanis founded one of the first technology news portals in Greek web, uh, technews.gr. Currently, Yanis is a co-founder and managing partner of Dark Pony D Digital, uh, which is a full-stack digital agency established uh, by a team of passionate people aiming to provide high quality internet services. And Yanis is experienced in project management with a strong background in team leadership and high end technologies in the internet trends. So That's please welcome right. yeah, our guest. So let's bring Yanis, right? So Hello. Yanis, hey Yanis, how are you Hello. doing, man? Hello. And Hello. internet goes crazy for Yanis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can hear the applause. <laughs> you Hello, hear guys. people uh, upload you. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for, for letting me join you. Hello to everybody all over the world. I can see people from Spain, London. That's fantastic. It's a fantastic day. You see, it's a good opportunity now with COVID. Everybody can join all over the, all over the world. I'm currently in Thessaloniki, Greece. Hopefully, everybody knows where Greece is. It's a bizarre situation here. Uh, with COVID, especially in uh, Thessaloniki, we got a huge issue. Everybody's locked down. So as I said, Bruno and Ruslan, I'll have only three three hours ahead of me because I have to go home by nine o'clock because you're not allowed to, to walk. So correct, correct. Uh, thanks, Ruslan, for the introduction. That brought me back like 30, 30 years ago nearly. That was 92 when I exactly, first yeah. uh, started dealing with internet projects and I built mp3.gr. Well, I'll talk about the, the present, <clears throat> mainly. I'm a co-founder and a managing partner of a digital agency. It's called Dark Pony. It's a funny name, but it makes sense for it's, us. It's, it's, it's uh, nice name, definitely. Our, our business is nearly 20 people at the moment. We are a full 360 digital agency, so we cover all the aspects of uh, custom designing and developing websites and doing content marketing and all the social media jargon like performance and calendars and stuff. And uh, as Russian Sled, I'm a happy customer of uh, Gelastic uh, since I think 2015. It's been nearly five or six years. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you that made a huge difference to our business, the way we grew. So we'll get back to that later on. So I think for the time being, back to Ruslan. And thanks for the welcome. Yeah, thank you, Yanis, right. for for the good words and uh, I just uh, showed on the my um, screen description of the um, use case yeah, yeah. dark one your, screen, your screen's not showing up right I, I'll show you screen in a minute Ruslan. so just, okay okay no problem just say hello so I see you know Tatiana from Spain so actually Tatiana uh, she's from Spain but she's also here in the backstage because Tatiana is the person running this whole thing in the background so thanks a lot Tatiana uh, so Danielle is from London. So thanks. So, so great to have you here with us, Danielle. And then we have uh, Ismael from Brazil. So we have Danielle and Ismael, right? So Ismael is from Brazil. So good to see you here. And Pema is saying hello to the to today's guest, right? So uh, so Pema is from hello, uh, Pema. yes, Pema, Pema is from Bhutan, right? So that's awesome. All right. Okay. So Ruslan, uh, you're gonna start. You're gonna start your presentation. Let me let me put your screen here and uh so how about you get started then Ruslan so with, with today's content so and, and by the way before Ruslan start for our, everyone here you know we want to make this very very interactive so feel free to ask questions absolutely all the time right I'm gonna be here monitoring the chat monitoring everything so you can so I can send uh, I can give Ruslan the question so go ahead ask as many questions as you want because today there's gonna be it's a pack a day with lots of cool stuff Cool. So do you see my screen now? Yes. Awesome. So there is a use case of Dark Pony Digital Agency. And why I like this use case? Because uh, Dark Pony uh, uses the PHP, many project in PHP. So um, the last two days we were talking about Java um, a lot, actually. So and today I am happy to touch uh, PHP language as well, like because again, as mentioned, we 
don't have religions about languages we support all of them and uh, yeah as you can see um dark pony chose elastic for like several reasons like high performing uh, cloud hosting speeding up uh, testing and uh, moving to production in fast way you know integrating with git and implementing continuous integration and continuous delivery simplified uh, database clustering uh, installations and and many other reasons i believe so we will hear and talk about them uh, a little bit later today so but uh, as i mentioned uh, the whole presentation uh, is about how we can get things done in a simple way how we can reduce complexity right because um, uh, in the past as you know like before the cloud you have to do almost everything by by your hands like uh, when we did not have this automation tools uh, and you, you buy like environmental infrastructure and you go like and configure even like with vpss you have to do a lot of uh, things and uh, today life can be uh, different so you can enjoy um, more more automation stuff so but um, you still need to learn um some things like and it depends on which level you are managing your interest uh, your let's say cloud infrastructure right so the surveys show that people still lack some skills um, for managing infrastructures if you go to infrastructure service you still have to do stuff manually you need to configure operating system update um security uh, moves um, sorry um, upload security updates time to time update your middleware stack like configure load balancing configure, configure availability so it, it's it's very complex like and as we can see look like we lost i think we lost Ruslan. Ruslan is back okay Ruslan is back Ruslan, we lost we lost you about ten seconds, so you can repeat the last thing you said. That's good. I think he's gone. Okay, so that was that was uh, that was uh, he came back enough to say. I'm using mobile and then he's gone, right? So, you know, uh, uh, let's see, let's see if we get, if we can get Ruslan back. So Yanis, let me, you know, why, why Rus Ruslan gets back, uh, you know, Ruslan is talking about, you know, about simplicity and everything. You just said that you are a small company and, you know, 20 people. So you, you don't have the luxury to say, okay, so, you know, uh, we, we can spend a lot of time to do things, right? You have to, to be very pragmatic on, 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 on everything, right? That, that's true and uh, as i said uh, joining and you know joining the elastic and using cloud services actually allowed me as a managing partner of the company to find precious time and my peace of mind in order to focus on other things more critical for the business like business development because uh, due to security reasons probably skills and uh, background i was the one who was doing all the system administration stuff so I had to deal with all the, you know, staging and production of projects and that was taking time and making sure that everything was working fine. You know, back in the early 2000, 2004, 2005, that wasn't an easy task. So this, yeah. uh, this, this choice we made actually helped us a lot and not only economically. And Ruslan actually said the most precious thing and the most expensive thing is time course and uh, that's a really good case with uh, cloud services and the actual cost of course is not uh, necessarily not a bad benefit but i would stick with what russian said that said that uh, the actual cost is precious time all right that's cool so russian is back and i'm just waiting for him to share his screen so we can we can i can i can send back to him um and so, so Yanis, uh, that's that's oops, I mean, so that's that's really good, Yanis. Uh, and and I told you, you know, one of one of the things that we can do uh, with with the cloud, is like you know, one one thing that lots of people don't realize that when you use the cloud, basically one of the things that we're outsourcing, we're we're outsourcing all of this work 
uh, of, of you know handing servers and networking and all of this so we're outsourcing to a, to a partner to a vendor right and so then that way we can focus on what we are very good at that is you know giving value to our customers and, and being creative and doing the right things that we want to do right exactly all right so Ruslan, okay. you're back can, let, let just, I I'm back here. Sorry, I had in near my area yesterday lightning and it just broke down some devices of our internet provider. Like I just don't have internet in the my home, only like mobile. So I'm streaming from mobile. I apologize, apologize for, for this. Yeah, so I hope now it will work. Um, I will switch yeah. off my personal video, but I will show my screen. Sounds cool, good. All right, no problem. Yes. So, so basically, so I'm very, I'm very glad that that um, you know the cloud providers don't don't have to run, you know, don't don't have to. to I mean, they, they solve those kind of problems, right? You know, when when the link goes down, it's their problem, not ours. That's awesome. Okay, Roslan. So I'm putting your your screen up here. Yes, go ahead. So we're gonna we're gonna keep Roslan uh, uh, camera off, uh, but yes, go ahead, Roslan. Okay, good guys. So again, like I, I believe you lost me. Uh, when I mentioned that uh, when projects start, uh, when people start a project, at the end, about 62%, according to the survey, um, they say like uh, complexity was more than they expected. So mo it, it was much more difficult uh, comparing to their initial expectation. So it's reality. We need to take it into, uh, this into account. And uh, Today, like we are moving to containers, right? Like uh, new technologies are coming like every day, like microservices, like and uh, stateless uh, and serverless and containers again, like so. And uh, what, what people say, according to the experience, uh, like lack of uh, resources and experience uh, with containers is one of the challenges uh, of uh, like this year, I mean, 2020 year. Uh, this survey was done by F Flexera. Um, and uh, the second problem is the complexity of migration, traditional applications uh, to containers. So yes, we were talking about containers last days, like they bring you efficiency, right? However, like uh, it also brings some uh, complexity. Um, and another problem is security. So people are concerned about the container security. Um, so these three uh, are the major problems uh, today, but uh, the, the, the most difficult one, I mean, the most uh, um, wide one is complexity of migrating to containers, of using containers, like how to learn um, these containers. So, and at the end, it comes to, you know, like, um, you have a lot of containers, you need to manage this uh, containers infrastructure, it brings a lot of complexity if you don't, if you don't have right tools like you are just lost uh, in this IT world and you will lost, uh, lose uh, de waste developers time and potential. So then uh, what, what uh, can be other challenges while migrating to the cloud? Uh, uh, when you migrate your traditional application you need to understand like uh, what kind of dependencies you have. So, and if you do like decomposition, if you put application from virtual machine to containers, you need to understand, okay, I want to put each stack into separate independent container, or like I want to put them all together. So there are two different approaches, like as for example, application containers, they advise you to do, um, to place each independent stack into separate container. So, um, you have better flexibility and better scaling, uh, uh, for example. But there is another approach when system containers can help you, for example, at the initial stage to do some kind of transition uh, when you do lift and shift approach. So you take everything as it was in virtual machine and you migrate to container. And then you can enjoy scalability and uh, efficiency as we discussed like uh, during the last two sessions. Uh, so please uh, keep in mind there are like system containers and they can help you to do migration of traditional applications. Still, uh, you can learn uh, and it's good if you know like how application container works uh, because you will be able to go even further uh, to get even better efficiency and even better scalability. So good and um, Deployment is another challenge uh, because uh, you need to deploy somehow applications, right? And people deploy into different ways. Like uh, in the old school uh, era, people deployed through FTP. Like so, they had a server, like and they did the deployments through FTP or archive, 
right, unzip this archive, like, and in this way, it, it was like some kind of delivery, like, right? but today, mm, it's a good uh, approach to use uh, Git uh, re repository, some kind of uh, so source code uh, version uh, repository. And it's also good if uh, there is some kind of automation, because if you have like multiple containers, um, this automation tool can deploy across all these multiple containers. Like you don't need to go like and uh, do it manually, and you don't need to actually co uh, script it by yourself. Because if you have high ability, you need to deploy at least into two servers. If you have scaling, like you need to deploy across multiple scalings. Um, if you use Docker containers, for example, right, like uh, they deploy together with Docker images. Um, so there is a little bit different approach how you deploy. Like it's not uh, uh, as it's just connect source code to your Git repo. Like you need to build image and then push your image to um, hub uh, registry. Uh, and then pull this hub registry, like, so, look, uh, I can tell you, like, use the option which is um, better for you uh, at this moment, like, right, like, you, it's good if you know both of them, uh, but uh, two of them have own pros and cons, uh, so you can uh, find good and bad things in, in both of them. But, uh, and, uh, yeah, like, if you don't ahead. mind jumping in, yeah. uh, Please. It's funny you described FTP and uh, old school processes. It, it's like uh, discussing 2020. Well, it's a bad year, but anyhow, uh, it's funny discussing FTP 2020. It sounds like a traditional email, traditional mail versus email. Deploying code uh, using FTP remind me back in like 10 years ago when we started Dark Pony. We had to do all the work by sending files via FTP. And because I was doing all the stuff, the developers had to send me files, individual PHP files, via Skype, or I can't even remember what kind of uh, messaging system we used back then. So it's a huge difference, the ability to, to send code automatically, or even by on demand by clicking on a button that says deploy or pull. That's a huge, a huge difference. And I'm pretty sure most of the developers are using uh, this kind of services, but those who don't, Please at least explore that because it's critical to your uh, workflow. Thank you, Yanis, for adding this great analogy. Exactly, like we have like mm, traditional mails and we have emails, right? Today, like uh, uh, look like um, people can still have some habits, right? Like with F FTP, uh, we, we say like it's you know like there is a better way to do this job. However, like if you don't want or you cannot for some reason, right, like to use another one, like still FTP is possible to do today, like maybe you will not enjoy like um, all this elasticity and scaling, right, like and you need to think about this. Also, what why I don't personally like it because it's very difficult to track um, changes during the time. So if you don't have any like um, source code uh, repository, right, but if you do have then it just doesn't make sense to deploy through FTP anymore. And also, FTP might not be secure. Like, so if you use like just plain FTP, it's really unsecure now. Mm, so you have to at least use like SFTP um, through HTTPS. Yeah, but Yanis, uh, thank you very much for adding uh, this notes. Like, uh, please, please consider using um, Git um, repos for deploying your applications. Uh, you will enjoy. Ruslan, I can see Paolo. He say, I know developers that were struggling with FTP too. I'm pretty sure everybody knows somebody else who's struggling with FTP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he, 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 he talk, yes, he's talking about uh, WordPress developers, right? But, you know, there, there is even, like, developers still doing things on FTP for sure. Uh, I'll jump, uh, say something else which is important. I'm pretty sure Ruslan will not say that because it's a legacy feature. Is that yeah, right? It is a legacy. It is, it is a legacy, legacy feature. But still on cloud services like Zalasti, you do have the option to enable FTP easily by just clicking on any container you want and have temporary access. Do what you have to do, for example, upload a big file or give temporary access to your client and then with one click, destroy completely the FTP process, which is amazing because still some legacy tools are really useful for day-to-day -day work. Yeah, yeah. Co correct. Because you still receive like normal mails, right? Like so, sometimes uh, I don't know, electricity comes through normal <laughs> mail. 
So look like, and why we support legacy stuff? Like, because it's, uh, it, it fits to our um, philosophy. We don't want to force people. We want to give them opportunities, but we don't want to make it by a force. While I'm pretty sure, like I know, like other um, solutions on the market, they you know enforce specific approach, like use like serverless only, like or like use like st stateless only, like or use like twelve factor of the, um, twelve factor up approach. Uh, I don't say it's uh, they, this approach is a, a bad, but um, my philosophy is in our philosophy is just different. Like we give options, like so we give you that and legacy. We give you new stuff and legacy. So like please think about uh, new approaches, migrate to new tools. Uh, you will save time. You will get better security. You will get better efficiency. But if you for some reason cannot uh, do it, like and I hope it's not because you're lazy. So then uh, you can still uh, use old approach. That's awesome. That's awesome, Rosan. So just just gonna say to Paul, to Paulo, Paulo, we're gonna get your question at, at some point, right? So hold on to it. Uh, I, I just just don't wanna just don't wanna disturb what what Rosan is talking about here right now. Okay. So yeah, let's go to containers. So now, like um, containers, uh, as I mentioned, um, the survey shows like um, actually migration to containers. Wait, wait, this one. Yeah, lack of experience and um, resources. Uh, you know. Um, what, what, how we can help, how Jolastic can help here. Um, Jolastic uh, provides a set of certified uh, containers um, for different uh, languages. For Java, PHP, Ruby, .NET, Node.js, Python, Go. And what does it mean? Like, so when you go inside, you will be able to find um, language tab, tab, and then you can choose specific stack. We have more than 50 application servers, databases, load balancers, storage, um, DB memory, uh, Middle West solutions. So, and you will be able to find uh, the Middle West tech that you use for your current application. And uh, we support multiple versions. Uh, for example, for Tomcat, you can see like uh, there is like three major versions, right? And um, there are more minors as well. And moreover, you can choose actually uh, GDK build from which provider you want to use, like from Oracle or from, let's say, like um, Azure systems or for, like from Eclipse. So it gives you a very good choice. At the same time, you don't need to worry, like, how to build this container because, like, so, we Ruzan, take... Yeah. So I, th I think I think you've mentioned that you can choose different providers. So I, I think that's a good, good moment to ask Paulo's question. And you can j just answer yes or no right now, and then you can go deeper later on. Okay. But he's asking about... Uh, what about Growl VM? You know, can you can you actually choose a Growl VM as a as a as a, a, a JDK too? So yes, Growl VM. We do have Growl VM here. I do believe we have it. So let me see. So it, you go like, do you see my screen now? Yeah. Yes, the screen is. So you 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 go Java Engine, and you see like Growl VM here. All right. Okay. So Paulo. That's don't don't even you should go even, even deeper. It's right there, easy and and good, awesome. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and Sorry. you you can, you can make it scalable. So if you want to improve this engine uh, container um, runtime, so you find something uh, is missing, like so, please let us know because Graal is uh, new, and we are collecting feedback um, and about this runtime. So moving forward. And there are more again, like for PHP. Let me show like real example. Like so, you can see like there is like drop downs, right? And I can choose so many different um, software stacks, right? Middleware stacks. And then for same for PHP, right? For PHP, we support like Apache, which is very popular. Then LAMP stack. Uh, it combines multiple um, multiple uh, stacks inside, like uh, Linux, uh, MySQL, Postgres, and Redis, I think. And and um, Redis, Redis probably yes uh, as well. Yeah, so yeah, and Redis as well. Yeah, but it's just a standard uh, name like Lamp. We also have like Lightspeed web server, uh, which is a commercial solution uh, to make your PHP uh, applications uh, website works uh, work very fast. Uh, we do have uh, free Lightspeed as well, filled up to. To make two gigabytes, uh, it's free, and then commercial uh, license will be enabled. We also support Nginx, uh, which is very popular and very good solution. And uh, 
you can choose different PHP versions. So it's pretty flexible. You don't need to go like and build your container, and you just choose choose the container. Like, and uh, we can scale this container later. But also, not only this, it's possible to choose your custom containers. For example, you know how to build containers, and uh, you do it in a specific way, and then you just print something, like let's print Nginx, right? Or you can uh, deploy like official Nginx image, or like from your image of your friend, let's say, right? And then you can, again, like choose uh, a version you want to deploy. Uh, sorry, let, let me switch to another one here. Yeah, you can see like there is a ability to choose um, different uh, text. So it's it's very flexible. If you know how to cook containers, you can deploy custom containers. If you don't know how to deal with containers, like I really recommend to use our um, containers because they optimize it for cloud. They optimize it for scaling. There are more automations inside. Like so, when we scale them horizontally, we know. Mm, how to configure replications like when we scale them vertically we know how to adjust um, configurations in, inside uh, to to consume uh, available resources in efficient way uh, because when you deploy a custom container like we don't know exactly what is inside like and it's very hard to you know to automate stuff but still like uh, it's possible to deploy uh, custom docker containers so great and um, Scaling, uh, we discussed, right? Like scaling uh, can be challenging, uh, is challenging uh, task. And specifically vertical scaling, uh, people can think like, oh, okay, it's easy, you just, you just drag and drop uh, uh, this slider and it's fine. Like, But look, uh, there are more things uh, behind vertical scaling. You really need to go and adjust some configurations file. And it's mostly for every middleware stack because if you don't do it, your application server or your database will not uh, utilize the available number of CPU or uh, cores or mm, not available memory. Uh, so it's important to, to understand like that uh, some adjustments are required when, when you do vertical scaling. But with Jelastic, uh, when you scale vertically, uh, you don't think uh, about this uh, anymore because we do um, automatic reconfiguration for you. So, Yanis, maybe you want to say something about this. Do you use uh, vertical scaling actually for your projects? Well, to be honest, uh, all our projects, and uh, we're talking about nearly 250 or 300 environments, all of them are using vertical scaling. And that was the wow moment, the first wow moment, because before the Elastic, we were using some dedicated service, but we started playing with VPSs. And uh, even for small projects, I had the bad habits, some say, some can say it's a bad habit, but I want to have each project isolated. So I was getting a small VPS, like a LAMP system, uh, Russian described, uh, Apache or Nginx with uh, MySQL and Redis, and setting up even small projects on individual VPSs. But that was a nightmare to, to handle, and you couldn't update it. And then you had to pay for it no matter what, even small sites, especially if you're you having clients that are focused in local markets, let's say Greece, uh, during the night time, you don't have any visitors at all. But still, you have to pay that amount of money monthly to get this VPS active. Then we use some other services like even cPanel on some um, kind of virtual cloud, uh, hybrid cloud services, where you have to send a ticket to the company, to the actual hosting provider and say, look, I want more memory for my VPS, and then they can upgrade it from 2 gig to 4 gig of RAM, and so forth, so on. And when I realized that we can do that automatically and keep the resources low, that was the first wow moment. And as I tell you, all our projects are definitely using vertical scaling. It's critical, both in terms of handling and pricing. Thank you, yeah, definitely. It's one of the most loved uh, by our customers, so it's very unique, elastic, um, and you know, like elastic is inside of our company name, like so it is in our company. You know, this vertical scaling, and I know for sure is enjoying vertical scaling as well, right, Bruno? Can you share maybe something yeah, about your experience? Yeah. Sorry, I've missed for a second, Ruslan. Yeah. Bruno, like uh, I'm sure that Bruno. Is Vertical scaling as well for his projects. Like uh, Bruno, what do you 
What do you think about this? Like, can you share your experience? So yes. So basically, I totally agree. With Yanis, right there. Um, you know, for us, we're 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 like very, 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 very small company, right? And so, uh, um, for me to be able to uh, simply adjust, uh, uh, you know, because vertical scaling, right? Remember that vertical scaling is it's a, it's a cool thing, because uh, you know we're just we're just putting the maximum of uh, um, uh, of how, how much resource we're using, right? So for me, just kind of enable vertical scaling is like no no brand at all right you know the more resources people use the more the machine grows and when people are not using anymore uh they they come down but you know but both vertical scaling and horizontal scaling for me uh were awesome because you know look uh um how do i know a lot of java i i i'm working with with um you know application service for a long time it's not trivial right it's not it's not easy and a lot of times I work, you know, I'm a consultant, right? So a lot of times I work with customers and they have to maintain their systems, their applications, uh, and they have to, you know, so, so I mean, my job is to actually make this whole thing working easily for them so that they can maintain for a long, for a long time. And so a lot of, so we, you go to the customer, you actually set this thing up and they can maintain it, right? For as long as they want. I mean, they don't, they don't need, uh, me to be there taking care of everything. So for me, uh, uh, being able to rely on Jelastic for all those things has been an awesome way, right? I'm just sad that some of the customers don't know Jelastic enough and they're like, oh, no, no, but we want to use another provider. We don't know Jelastic. So, so we have to explain. And, you know, and then, then some customers you have a, a hard time and some, some customers you don't. Well, it happens, right? Being a consultant, you have to do all of those things. You learn your story and then you know how to explain it. I've done that for like a hundred, hundred customers, and I know exactly what to tell them now to convince them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but exactly. it's a secret. I won't tell you what I'm telling them. <laughs> Please share. Right. So, Rosa, I think I think it's a good time. You know, you're talking about you know start starting this content and everything, and then Paolo says, uh, you know, you already said, and I think that I think that was clear for everyone that you can run. Uh, your own containers, you can run Docker containers in Jelastic. I mean, you have to take more care because you build your containers, so you, it's more of your responsibility. Uh, if you use Jelastic containers, everything is done for you. But if you use Docker containers, you have to, a little bit more work because of that. But Paolo has gone one step further, right? Do you support uh, Docker registers, right, besides Docker Hub? Can you run uh, uh, your own Docker register? Yeah, so you can connect to your private registry, uh, first of all, right? Uh, if you have it uh, somewhere like outside, but inside Elastic is possible to deploy um, Docker registry as well. Uh, I'm not sure we have it out of the box yet. So, Yanis, what do you use for um, for your own projects? Well, we use the uh, default uh, environments. It's for Docker okay. the containers you provide. Okay, when I see. The, ma so, the majority of our products are larger than PHP. I, I see. I see. Yeah. Question was about uh, Docker uh, registry. Um, uh, Docker registry is possible to deploy in, in Elastic. Actually, you just go like and find like registry here. I believe like yeah. Uh, yes. Let, yeah. Let me find yeah. it. Oh yeah. 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 yeah so wait. You, 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 before before you show your screen, Ruslan. So so yes. So basically. Uh, um, so Paolo, I think it's Paolo. So Paolo, uh, one thing that we did uh, when we first started, uh, you know, we, we, we weren't sure because we started with, with uh, a long time ago by putting Docker containers on Jelastic. Actually, I can say this, right, Ruslan? I'm, I maybe, maybe I'm not exaggerating, but uh, I think I was one of the very, very first customers that had Docker containers on, on, on Jelastic because I know, you know, I was working with you guys directly with Jelastic every single day to get everything adjusted and everything so you guys were great at that time so and so all when i we started we we were um we we were, we were actually were not running uh, uh on on docker hub uh because you know we had our own containers the way the, the way we wanted them to do so um so yes i, I you, you can totally connect to, uh, to, to our docker um registry that's not on Jelastic. But I think what Ruslan is going to show is that you can actually run right the whole Docker environment inside Jelastic if you want to do this, right? So, okay, Ruslan, I'm going to put your screen here. Yeah, 
Co correct. So uh, you can find the uh, registry um, in Docker um, Hub and deploy your standard uh, Docker registry. Uh, there is also possibility, we will uh, talk about this when you deploy GitLab. So re the registry is already connected uh, inside. Like um, There is another good solution, I believe, from JFrog. Uh, their container registry is it's another good one. So um, it's a good question. Like So maybe we need to add custom, you know, like private registries. But mostly, look, mostly private cloud customers are interested in such kind of solution because like Docker um, for now is popular. However, actually, they recently introduced some um, new pricing model. Like maybe it's a time to add, um, you know, own registry inside Elastic. Good. So we are ready to go. Right. Actually, so, let's... yeah. One more comment, Ruslan. So yes, uh, you know, just kind of doing, um, you know, one of the things that that, that we that we we run with Paulo, uh, and so actually Paulo has a comment here. But one thing that we run with Paulo is that we run, uh, uh, you know, Nexus uh, Docker register, right? So for 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 some of our customers. So yes, and that so we run this thing inside Elastic, and when we access the register inside Elastic, so that works too, and so. And Paulo says, 100% agree with Bruno. As an architect, helping creating uh, uh, solutions in terms of tech stacks and language and deployments has always been the nightmare part. Yes, man. You know, every time, especially when you're working on, you're, you're consulting, working with all kinds of different customers, man, this part is, is crazy because a lot of times you get in a customer and they, and they have their own uh, uh, infrastructure and, and they have their own infrastructure team that's, that's running things in the cloud. And lots of times you don't have, you know, lot, not a lot of companies don't have DevOps, right? So you actually don't have a good relationship with, with the, I mean, not, not a good relationship, but you, you don't have an easy way to work with, with the, uh, uh, the infrastructure team sometimes. And, uh, but yes, I totally agree with you, man, working as a consultant, with different type of companies, big companies, small companies, all kinds of crazy things, the deployment part is 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 you know is is big nightmare. So we, are, we that's what that's what we're trying to solve here today, right? Making things simpler. And because Zabi says hello, so Kazabi has been here with us since Monday. So hey, Kazabi, good to good to, good to have you here, man. All right. Good. So um, then finalizing about vertical scaling. Uh, the only issue uh, with vertical scaling um, is the following: like it's available um, only in Elastic, so you cannot find, you know, <laughs> exactly like this and That's other clouds. An <laughs> yeah, I understand. Like, look, I mean, like in general, right? Like, uh, I'm happy that we have competitive advantage, but look, in general, like I will be happy to see the whole world, like you know, moving in a better place. You know, if everyone offers this like vertical scaling and paperless model, like I'm pretty sure like our company will find out something um, new to compete um, with other guys. Like, but because like why I'm why I'm saying like this, because I truly believe like vertical scaling is, is a mandatory, like, you know, and it's a must, like, and uh, people just did not pay attention enough to, to this, like, and if you don't pay attention, you spend a lot of uh, resources, you waste uh, a lot of resources. So. Yeah, and actually, there is an unfair um, pricing when you pay only for the limits, no, not what you use. Like, so there are many problems around this vertical scaling, and vertical scaling can help you to be more efficient, like you know, to bring your scaling to the next level. So uh, this is about vertical scaling, but of course, vertical scaling uh, without horizontal scaling uh, is not is not going to work for a large project, uh, and this is why you need horizontal scaling at least for high availability. At least you need two. Uh, containers to, um, and the horizontal scaling can Ruslan, before before we yeah. go to horizontal scaling um yeah. there is a there's a quick question here uh from miguel right and miguel asked you know he said he missed it a little bit but he, he, he said you know uh is the, re the register in docker gelastic is not the best solution so miguel we're actually talking about different ways that you can run that you can access a docker register so you, so you can run your own docker register inside gelastic you can access an external uh, Docker register. So I'm, I'm not sure uh, what part you read that was not the best solution because we're talking about different type, different solutions. And yes, you can, you can choose different solutions for your Docker register uh, inside or outside Elastic. You could just use Docker Hub. You can use all kinds of different things. Right, Ruslan? Yeah, so 
Yeah, co correct. Like so, you can deploy different Docker registries in Elastic. By default, we do not provide um, registries uh, at this moment. Like so, um, because Docker Hub was very popular. Like we actually did not have too much requests uh, till maybe you know like recent times, but still not not very many. Like so, if you can say like which one is the most preferable for you, right? Because there are many solutions on the market. And we need to start from some, uh, at least the most popular. So, um, right. so tell us, tell us what kind of registries you want to um, see in Elastic, like, and okay. I'm pretty sure we will we will be able to extend. Yeah. So, so basically, what Ruslan is saying, Miguel, is that there is not a Docker register from Elastic, right? So, you know, uh, that that you can use immediately, but you can, you can use your own. You can install your own inside Elastic if you want. So, there's all kinds Correct. of different ways. Correct. All right. Cool. So, 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 I mean, so mm -hmm. last, last thing before Ruslan goes to horizontal scaling. So vertical scaling, you know, basically for me, uh, uh, you know, as I said before, being a small company uh, and and look, I think for me, the biggest advantage, and I think we talk about this when we talk on Monday about scalability, right, Ruslan? Uh, the biggest advantage of having, uh, uh, you know, uh, vertical scaling is that I don't have to worry about. I mean, there's nothing better than not having to worry about, right? Really, you know, because look, I only pay for what I use. That's what we talk about this on, on, on Wednesday, right? I only pay what I use. So when I get, when I put a new customer and I say, you know, I don't know how, how many, how many things this customer is going to use. I don't know. So I just, whoop, <laughs> I put as much as I think it's possibly going to go right. Making in a crazy black Friday, you know, I just kind of put there. Right. And forget about it. Right. Because I don't pay for it. Right, so I can just say, you know, if if it goes very high for any reason, it can go. Right, I'm okay. I'm okay paying it. I prefer to pay if it goes very high. Right, I prefer to pay for it than have my customer, uh, uh, you know, be out of resources. Right, so you no, know, so that's so cool. And I think there's look, really, there's nothing better than this. Right, I I I run thing. I I know I, I run customers in other providers that don't have that, and we are always discussing. You know how much how big this machine has to be you know how much how much memory should i put oh but if i put more i'm gonna have to pay so let's you know we we grow and we keep monitoring so we grow more when you need you know this all this discussion always happens all the time right but then for me it's like whoop put as much as i want okay and let your last handle it the, the worst thing that could happen is that i get a bill for oh you know you had this very very high load for about 10 minutes and you're you're being charged for it like no problem man that's no problem at all okay so that's one and by the way look i understand that ruslan is going to talk now about uh uh horizontal horizontal scaling and yes horizontal scaling works great and but it's so much more complicated right i mean i know gls makes it so easy in lots of different ways but you know there's look there's nothing easier you know you get a jenkins server for example you just say okay i want i want as much memory as this thing needs right when they I don't need to have like lots of Jenkins servers doing lots of things at the same time, you know? So, I mean, there are lots of, lots of use cases that all you need is when I need more, I'm going to get it. And that's all I need. I, that, that's, that's great. So just, yeah. just want to say this last thing. <laughs> and if sorry, sorry, about, uh, Bruno, because some people may think that, okay, if I put, you know, the slider all, all over the place and right at the top, I will start paying a lot and maybe sometimes application fails. Okay. That happens as well. So you can get loads of usage and using loads of resources because of bad code or something. But another good thing is that you get alerts. So even if you have the slider right to the right and the application starts misbehaving and you got lots of, uh, you know, high percentage of resources, you get an email and you get an alert and you know what to look for. And if it's right. not a Black Friday, as we discussed, and it's a Saturday night, and for some reason the project goes at, at the top, then you can easily look if something's wrong with it. So do not worry that you will start losing fortune because of uh, using vertical scaling. Yeah, that's very correct, true. Correct. Very true. Correct. So if, and if you look like uh, Black Friday is coming, like what I recommend, like go to the settings, right like and just make it like this like you know scroll up uh, the slider like get more resources for vertical scaling like and, and make, uh, add the black friday button there click 
<laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. Black, correct. Black, black Friday button. So so Paul is 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 is, is kind of making a comment here, just, just so we can we can put this discussion on on, uh, on Docker as to rest. Paul is saying there's a lot of good ones out there, but I think the ones integrated with GitHub and GitLab are the more convenient, right? Because of all, all the integration and like with the pipelines and things like this. Yes. So you know, so the good, the good thing is that you can use whatever you whatever you want, right? And you can also, as I said, we run our own Docker register inside, uh, you know, in, 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 inside inside our own tooling inside Elastic. So you can even do that if you prefer to integrate more with your pipeline, this kind of things. All right. So that's enough about Docker register. Um, and you know, of course, if you guys have more questions, that's that's just just ask us. We're going yeah, to. Sorry yeah, one, one more, time. one more about about simplicity. Like, again, like we're talking today about simplicity, right? Like, so we want to save time for developers and for sysadmin guys. Like, and for example, like if you set like eight gigabyte of RAM for your um, instance, right? And um, let's say like you did the wrong guess for limits, so you actually need more, like because more load, like uh, for application. So what will happen at other cloud providers? Like most likely you have to first of all like buy twice bigger machine and then like do manual migration. Like you cannot add more resources to the same instance, like to the same container, like or to the same virtual machine. Like you have to do like manual work for for migrating your application. And it's not really convenient. Uh, while it's possible to do, you know, like just drag and drop and add more resources to the same container in Elastic so it's again like very convenient like if you set the small limit you will get notification from the system like you need a little bit more then you just go and drag and drop no need to spend time for migrating your application right? so it's super convenient and this is why reason i'm saying like uh, why it's only in elastic available um, today good so uh, go to horizontal scaling um i can talk about vertical scaling a lot like because it's one of the more, my favorite uh, features so horizontal scaling it's a must for critical production applications like it's a must for high viability um it's a must for high load like when just one container uh, cannot handle this um and uh, usually uh, ho uh, horizontal scaling is very complicated like because you need to configure horizontal scaling on different levels, like on application server level, right? On database level, uh, on load balancing level. And maybe you still have uh, like caching uh, level. Like, um, so you need to configure um, heavy there on storage level. So because if you configure only on one level and then hardware fails, um, you will have one single point of failure at specific level, which is not uh, redundant. Um, and configuring all these layers levels are complicated is complicated process because you need to know exact things like how uh, to configure the application and please keep in mind very often there are different schemes for replication like so uh, people call it like master slave right like or like master master um and and others like so you need to know specific details like how this um, configuration works and um, also if you use plain infrastructure as a service uh, most likely you have to do um, additional configurations by yourself when you add one more virtual machine because you need to go and configure your middleware stack right while with Jelastic, uh, it's very easy you just add uh, you just press plus button and we add more servers for you and these servers will be connected to load balancer automatically so you don't need to go to load balancer and reconfigure it we do it for you like it doesn't mean nothing is configured like no like we will configure it for you um, um behind the scene like so you don't you just don't see it like you don't you don't think about it at all anymore sorry guys it, it happens sometimes you see like um heavy ability is very important so this is the reason why we are talking about this like um, we will figure out where, where was the failure but at least we came back uh, now like and we are ready to forward like so please be ready to ask more questions so i jump into presentation bruno what do you think yeah yeah show show, show back your screen and go get back so so we can actually get get restarted here okay, yeah. okay i'm starting my screen now yes okay uh, good right. so, um so okay. I want to conclude there. Uh, I think 
most people uh, remember that we were discussing about SSLs and horizontal scaling and IP addresses. <clears throat> and from uh, what you described, I think the best uh, idea, the best solution is if you know that the project is big enough and you're going to need horizontal scaling to set up your balancers beforehand. So maybe it's a better idea to have a balancer, have at least two nodes of your application server, a balancer for your database, two nodes for your database servers. So you have already predefined your main IP addresses for your DNS records and your database, and then you can easily scale horizontally to sky is the limit. Do you agree Correct. with that? Absolutely, yes. So it's a very good way to do it. Like, so you just call balancers in advance, and balancers mostly in the more cases like you you don't need to scale them them because like exactly. the load load is moving to up and to database level so you are, are staying like uh, number let's say and you have IP addresses and SSLs so thank you Yanis it's a very good advice for people yeah definitely good so we have like this easy manual scaling right like we discussed it time about uh, stateless and stateful approach uh, and you can easily switch between them i will not go through the because uh, you can review our previous presentation we had a conversation about stateless and state, uh, stateful um, uh, so but i want to emphasize uh, automatic so when you um, on, when you are on the or you're sleeping during the night like and the lord is coming you so you need to configure specific triggers, like a trigger configured based on CPU, memory, network, disk, disk IOPS, right? And uh, yeah, like you specify, like for example, add more nodes when load is five um, percent, like at least five minutes, and scale uh, out uh, to eight nodes, uh, one node, and then like when load goes down, like is less than thirty-five percent, like please scale in to two nodes by one so you can define this trigger and the system will automatically do the job for you like it's easy, really and comparing to the old ages when you need to do scripting some kind of you know logic to the new server to you know add this new server like servers to each other configure a lot balancing like session replication uh it was really really complicated you need to track like current load so now the cloud uh, can do it for you. Like so, just specify a specific, just like, and it, it it's done. So this feature I very much as well. Good. So um, anything else to related to scaling, Clicity? Questions uh, related to horizontal scaling, maybe? No questions. Yeah. yeah? So okay. Mm -hmm. no, we don't we don't see any question right now i just want to say that miguel uh you know did something like we did here right so when, when he had this big problem he he said here that he restarted uh, you know he's just say oh i need to restart windows right and then he upgraded the application in the back end in the background uh to get this whole thing back running right so yeah that's exactly what we did here you know we kept talking to you guys why we we redid the page we did everything so that so ruslan um, I think it's all uh, awesome in terms of scalability, and I think that there's nothing, uh, you know, when, when we can do scalability in an easy way. Um, I, I, I've got a question for you, Ruslan. So you think that when, when people are able to do scalability in an easy way, like you just showed, that people use it more? Uh, and so, you know, because do you think that a lot of people actually don't use this, the, don't, don't benefit from these advantages because things are so complicated? that they get afraid or they don't know how to do it. And so they just kind of kept keep like just running everything in one server. And so when things are a lot easier, they're actually going to have a, a, a they're going to use it more or that doesn't happen. Uh, exactly. Um, this is um, simplicity drives people to discover new things, like because it's lower uh, entry barrier and it's easy to start and easy to play. So you don't need to spend, you know, like your weekends, like or like working days to configure all these um, complex things. Like so, definitely, like it drives adoption. Like people are not afraid anymore. Like uh, and uh, they can get it easily. So definitely, simplicity helps to to 
to implement this horizontal automatic scaling, let's say, yeah. Good, Bruno. So thank you for the questions. Let's move on. Uh, and this one is like high level, let's say, like next level, right? Multi-cloud deployment. And when, when probably you need multi-cloud? So there are different cases, right? I can tell you. Uh, for example, um, when your customers have specific preference, uh, for example, one customers want to host data in Amazon for compliance reason, like or like for preference reason. I don't know, like so they have some internal policies, like nothing can be hosted like outside of Amazon, like or uh, same can happen with Azure. Like Azure actually provides very good um, discounts and uh, some bonuses, some programs for loyal customers. Like so, and sometimes customers want to utilize this um, free resources, right? Or like you want to do. Uh, have ability even on data center levels, right, right on cloud providers levels. Uh, that's like very complex, honestly, today. Like not many companies have solution for multi-cloud uh, because uh, what is the problem? Like because different clouds they offer different APIs. Like they have different UI. Like you know, like you need to have uh, one dedicated guy like for Amazon and maybe one for Azure like uh, if you if you run multiple projects like because um, they they are still quite complex uh, and doing interoperability across the clouds is way more complex uh, solution than just scaling project like so i would say like several times more complex uh, and um, you know like but there is a possibility uh, to get it uh, in an easy way uh, with Jelastic uh, and how we do it. Um, we install, we can install Jelastic on Amazon, on Azure, on Google, even on digital ocean, like, or on top of bare metal. And we unify experience for developers. So you will get the same UI and the same APIs, and you will be able to choose to which data center you want to deploy, like, or to which cloud provider you want to deploy it. So at the end, you have like the same UI panel, like the same nice uh, dashboard, but you can deploy across different clouds, like, and you have the same unified experience. And we call it like interoperability. At my demo cluster, like, I have two different providers: OVH with Barometal and Servers.com. Like, actually, it's Barometal as well. Like, so I have two different providers in two, two different locations. Actually, more, more than two different locations here. And as you can see, like, it's the same UI, same Elastic. Like, I, I can easily to choose to which region to deploy. So it means uh, with Elastic you can simplify a lot um, when when you move to multi cloud. And please, when people talk multi cloud, um, please uh, take into account it's not aggregation of different services from different cloud vendors, right? Like so, you use <clears throat> one cloud service from one provider and another cloud from another provider. No, multi cloud when you use similar kind of uh, services from different uh, cloud providers because when you then you will be able to get your data get your application from one cloud and, and migrate to another one like, right so to do portability so interoperability and portability is they are close to each other uh, and again like it's more for you know like advanced workloads like for large-scale project like for people who need this heavy ability across different clouds and we have very nice features very cool and only Jelasti can do it today uh, like live migration across the cloud when you migrate from amazon and azure without downtime it sounds like you know some some fairy tale but it, it's reality like we have such kind of technology that allow us to do migration uh, across different uh, clouds so not sure if uh, many people use it uh, in public cloud but in private cloud it's definitely one of for interesting features where people uh, like to have. Uh, then let's go to automatically um, automatic deploy and updates from Git and SVM. Um, coming a little bit back uh, to um, a real uh, more often used cases. For example, uh, as I mentioned, um, if you use Git repo, you can enjoy deployment across multiple instances in an easy way, in an automated way. And also there is a possibility to do uh, commitment to commit sorry to your repo and Jelastic will pull this update uh, automatically so you can check box like auto uh, deploy updates 
and you specify which um, period of time when Jelastic should check uh, this updates. And if update happens, so uh, Jelastic will pull this update and deploy across all servers. Like easy again, like you just work with your Git repo and you don't think anymore about how to deliver your code to productions or to um, dev, dev environments. Then like again, like it's for uh, more or less a simple workloads. Like if you talk about more complex uh, workloads and pipelines, then I suggest you uh, to think about um, additional tools uh, like Jenkins, for example, right? Because these tools are like they are focusing specifically on uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery um, pipelines. And Jelastic has um, Jenkins package, and this is very nice package. It's a clustered package. When you create a Jenkins, uh, we will create a one node with master Jenkins, and then we will create one worker node uh, for builds. But you can easily scale worker nodes horizontally. You just go and add. Uh, you, you see, like there is a ability to specify like more more nodes, worker nodes, and uh, you will be able also to scale, as as I mentioned here. Like you just add more more nodes. Then Jelastic will automatically connect these nodes to the master. Like and in this way, you will be able to scale uh, your um, builds, let's say, right? Like if you have like multiple teams, if you have multiple projects, uh, this is uh, what what you are looking for, like because you don't want to, you know, like one developer to be stuck and to wait in a queue while worker node is ready to accept his project. Like so, you want to have multiple worker nodes. And Jenkins uh, in Elastic is um, solution which can help you. Okay. Uh, so cool. Yeah. Back. Ruslan, I think there's some okay. questions here that I think you, you just mentioned. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, there, there's some questions from Paulo here that I think we can address okay. later. There's one that from from Miguel that you just mentioned a, a, a minute ago, and he's asking about you know about the the live migration. He says, so if I have a client using Azure Cloud in the U.S. region, could I migrate my GLS to a U.S. region to reduce latencies? That's the idea. So, what's what's you know when you, when you talk about live migration? Uh, what is what is the be the best use case for live migration? Very good. So, for example, you mm, live migration is very useful at least for service providers uh, today. Like um, they use it often on the um, background. Like you don't see it. Like for example, uh, they have like big cluster, right? And they are running customers on host nodes, but like they need to update operating system or, or like apply like security patches, and it's impossible to do. For example, uh, an update which is impossible to apply without reboot of the um, um, worker, uh, sorry, host node, or like they want to change some um, some uh, devices, like you know, disks, right? Like uh, what options they have? Like uh, bring down machine, right? But uh, there are running containers inside, and. Uh, and uh, like uh, they, if if they bring it down, they will bring down and customer applications. Like so, what they do usually, we have like feature which is called like evacuate, like evacuation, like and the, we evacuate all containers from one uh, host node to another host node in live mode. So it takes a while, but again, like it's full, it's automated. Um, um, service provider can press a button, and uh, containers will be um, evacuated and migrated to uh, across other to other host nodes. So, and at the end, uh, service provider can do maintenance. So this is one of the most used use cases. Like now regarding um, migration across the clouds, uh, look, uh, what is the use case for this? Uh, and what, what we are aiming to do? Um, do you know, like, uh, I, I believe you use like Google map, right? Like when you drive to a specific location and uh, for example, there is a traffic jam and Google tells you like, hey, like I found a faster, faster road so press this button like and save 15 minutes. Um, this is what we want to do with clouds, like because we are multi-cloud solution and uh, we add more partners. And, uh, and in the near future, we will like you know today we have um, more than uh, 80 uh, data centers, like and we will have even more. Uh, so what we aim to do like an ability to give a customer uh, alerts when, the, for example, new location is coming or new data center is coming, like right, like we will be able to say like hey. There is a new provider uh, which has a better performance and a better price. Like, hey, just press a button and we will migrate you from another cloud to, um, from this cloud to another one. Like, so this is where, where we want to be. Um, yeah, uh, and um, another case can be 
mm, you don't like for some reason one provider anymore so you want to migrate your old data to another one uh, but you have like critical applications or like you just don't want to bring your applications down uh, so this is the reason um, why life migration can be useful for you of course you can if again like if you create like right process for high viability uh, then you bring down one by one you know like and you restart the load it's possible to do without um, some without affecting your production as well uh, but still like having life migration uh, it's much easier like because you don't need to you know to do all this one by one um restart like and remove from load balancing then again like add to load balancing so it's just easier because there is no downtime with light integration so i hope it clarified some points but but uh, this feature is very let's say like new and unique uh, because nobody did it uh, before and um again like as soon as it becomes more widely adopted like more use cases will uh, come up Good. So I hope I answered the question. If there are no follow-up questions, so then um, Yanis, maybe you can tell a little bit about up, uh, updates uh, automatically deploy. Like, do you use this functionality? By the way, well, deployment automatic uh, automatic deployment is uh, it's a nice feature because uh, first of all, combined with the zero downtime deployment that's available in Elastic, you can literally update a live project with thousands of uh, concurrent users right there you just click redeploy you pull code from git and with zero downtime deployment there is no downtime at all automatic deployment though which we do not use on live projects uh, at least as, as an agency it's really useful for uh, development when you're staging projects or you develop projects and you don't want to give access to the actual cluster to your developers you can just link your github uh, code with a repo, deploy it on the Elastic and just click automatic deployments. And every time a developer pushes something new on the Git, GitHub repo, automatically is pulled on the server so they can actually see the project updated and they can use, especially if you do website development like we do, it's really critical, critical to test your application on mobile phones. So it's really handy as you can understand that the right code, they push it on Git, automatically is pulled on the server. They can use the temporary host name on Elastic and see the project live on their mobile phones. So this is really handy because it's security as well. You don't give access to all your developers to your cluster. And I think someone explained that, I think it's Miguel and Paolo, that yes, definitely that's the case. You can train people who are not sysadmins and they will never be because not everybody can be a sysadmin okay that's uh, that's clearly understood to those who, who deal with with that kind of stuff but you can easily train people like developers even non-developer guys that can do some basic management of your application servers get backups see if something is working even pull code from git or whatever subversion uh, version control you use so for us, automatic deployment and uh, Git deployment is uh, extremely useful. We do use it every day, multiple times. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I you I for... Thought... Yeah, I, to I, totally, I totally agree with you, uh, uh, Yanis, because really, uh, that's for me, this is, you know, what, you what, what Paul is talking about. Uh, this for me is my, it's a, it's a big use case for me, Paulo, because, uh, you know, I, I, I've got... I, I've helped lots of customers that, you know, once, once we go there, we figure, we, 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 you know, we implement the software, we get everything running or we put things in the cloud, mm -hmm. then, you know, I'm a consumer, so I leave, right? So, you know, and then uh, uh, a lot of times what happens that, you know, the, the, the team has to continue uh, to, to, to support and, and to get things running and moving. And, and that's a lot easier for them uh, to do with, you know, when, when things are simple and very, very powerful, um, there's a lot, of, a lot easier for them to actually just make this whole thing work. Yeah, so I totally agree with you, uh, Paulo. This is exactly uh, my my main use case, right? And a lot of different customers is to actually uh, get them. They're they're not cloud experts, um, and, and they're they're not even uh, like Yanni said. They're not even uh, sysadmins experts, right? 
and 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 th so that's good. And and by the way, we have a, a cool story. You know, maybe maybe you can get this guy. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure if Serge he is listening to us, but maybe we can get uh, this friend of ours that just we he just did this. Uh, you know, he he is uh, you know he's a web developer. Uh, he's not even you know he's not even a job developer. He's more like a, a designer that that does also web development. And he created this very, very cool application, very cool, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the project that he did on top of WordPress. And then, you know, I, I told, he was asking me, Bruno, how can I do this in a way that's easy uh, uh, for me to do? Because I'm, you know, I, I'm running in this in this co-location servers, and you know, I'm, I'm performance not good. I'm worried about you know getting more people into this thing. There's you know the whole project is going well. And I told him, so look, man. You know, you can just move to a WordPress uh, cluster on Jalask, right? And then, and then, and then I told him, I said, "Look, uh, um, you know, too much today. I'm very, very busy. How about tomorrow we sit together and I'll help you, uh, just so you understand how the environment is, and then you can take a look." And so, uh, and 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 then, oh, actually, I, I, I said, "I just have a few minutes. I can show you a little bit, so so you you can decide." But then tomorrow we can sit down and I can help you with this. So I showed them. The environment where I show him uh, for him to create a WordPress cluster and everything, and so I said, okay, so I don't have more time today. Let's schedule for tomorrow. So next day, he's like, Bruno, everything is running on Jalask. I'm like, what? He's like, you know, it's awesome. I, I move everything already, and oh, basically he started telling me, oh, I, I did some tasks here, and performance performance is great, and I tried to to throw as much things in it. It's you know, it's it's uh, it scales a lot and everything. And I said, okay, so then we can move. And he said, no, no, I already did. All the tests I'm telling you about is on the production server. I already moved it to the Elastic. And so he did this without being a sysadmin, without being uh, uh, developed, just, just knowing uh, uh, WordPress very well. And, you know, and, and his, so he moved all his application, all his customers, everything to the Elastic in, in a day, right? And so he's very happy with it. Maybe, I can, maybe, I can, maybe you can try to get him on Monday here, Ruslan, to talk a little bit about, about his experience. I'm not sure how his yeah. English is, though, but let's, let me check. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good, guys. Cool. So yeah, um, working with Git uh, today is a mandatory knowledge, honestly. Like, so you you need to um, in incorporate this into your um, daily processes. Let's say, like, yeah, because it's easier to collaborate. It's easier to deploy. Like, um, it's just a mandatory things you need to do. Nice. So we are ready to move forward. I explained already um, for Jenkins. So you can find it easily. Like we have. Uh, like Jenkins uh, pack, the web spec here, right? You can choose like how many workers you you want to have, uh, and it's good to have multiple workers when you have a larger team because um, you will not have a queue. And then for more advanced projects, uh, we have GitLab, uh, which is I like it very much. Like we use uh, GitLab for inside Elastic uh, for our own needs, um, for so our runs and builds stuff, uh, deploys uh, code, source code into um, uh, GitLab. Uh, GitLab is available as well, and we created <coughs> cluster mode, uh, specifically, like we have like server, right? We have registry, container registry. Um, people asked about this, so this uh, GitLab container registry. And also we have uh, runners, and these runners will be automatically connected to the server. Um, and you can easily again scale them horizontally. And same, like you need more runners, like when you have a bigger team, because you don't want your developer to wait uh, while another project is, is building. Um, so you want your developers to get um, as much as, as possible, as fast as possible, uh, his build. So, and GitLab is available here. Right here. So it's like DevOps lab, GitLab server. Yeah, it's easy. Like uh, you just specify name, like and it like and you specify you know, with less encrypt by default or not. Like we even automate uh, SSL configurations for you. Like there are a lot of information behind, and you get it in, in a simple click. Cool. So and for super advanced users like who knows how to work with Kubernetes, who likes Kubernetes, and we have special solution. Kubernetes cluster and it, it can be integrated automatically with uh, GitLab. Um, so there is like auto DevOps pipelines 
And uh, yeah, I recommend you to go to our blog and to check how it works. It say it can save you um, from efforts configuring. So you need to create like Kubernetes cluster. You need to create one to each uh, to another one, but it's really simple interconnections uh, comparing to configure it for everything from scratch. Cool. So going next. Um, so, so Ruslan, yeah, go ahead. Ruslan, I think I think that's that's actually a, a good point for me to to you know to to ask you this. Uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, deploying Kubernetes. That's a, that's a question I get a lot in terms of Jalask. Is that you know should I mean why why should I do I, I go do Jalask if I can do Kubernetes? Right? Uh, isn't Jalask and Kubernetes the same thing or or things like that? And you know, um, my experience with Kubernetes is like it's pretty complex and complicated. Um, and you know, but but if I if I want to use Kubernetes inside Elastic or or anything like this, is that is that possible? Can you talk a little bit about Elastic and Kubernetes? Yes, correct. So <clears throat> look like if you uh, can, if you cannot decide like what which one better to use for you, like Kubernetes or Elastic, right? So like and um, for some for example, you are convinced to go with Kubernetes. Like my goal and goal of our team, like you know, not to turn you off uh, from Kubernetes. Um, still, it's fine. Like you go with Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a great uh, solution, um, but deploy it inside Elastic. Uh, why, like inside Elastic? Because you will enjoy vertical scaling and horizontal scaling automatically. Uh, it's automated inside. Like so, with other uh, cloud providers, you have to pay like for limits of your uh, worker nodes. With Elastic, it's not like this. So again, like you solve this right sizing problem. Like you can set big limits for your worker nodes. But if your worker nodes are not consuming uh, resources, like you will not pay for that resources. It's nobody else provide you something like this. And uh, why Kubernetes can be a good option for you as well, like because there are many applications already written for Kubernetes. So maybe you don't want to, you know, write everything from scratch. So you just grab from the market ready to go Kube application that can be deployed into Kubernetes. So you you deploy this application into Kubernetes inside Elastic. Easy, like so. You enjoy vertical scaling, so you enjoy like um, horizontal scaling uh, with Elastic, and you can uh, get your nice Kubernetes cluster. Like so, and even some providers are um, doing managed services for you with Kubernetes. But uh, if it's too complex for you, if uh, you realize it consumes more resources than you you expected. Uh, because it is uh, comparing when you deploy it directly into Elastic, um, so consider just using our certified containers, because like you can enjoy the same, uh, the same um, um, like scaling, right? Uh, because why why people like Kubernetes because it's scaling because uh, elasticity, but it's available in Elastic uh, and it's easy, uh, nice, uh, you know, ready to go images like tested um, and uh, ready to go clusters. So two options available, like it's up to you which one to use. But we have a very nice story, like uh, one customer um, used Elastic for a long time and he was running a uh, Magento store, like uh, eShop. And he was super happy because he never had downtimes during Black Friday, like in several uh, years in a row. Before he always had it, like, but after he migrated to Elastic, he never had uh, the downtime during Black Friday. And one day he came to our partner, like the, the trans um, infrastructure for him, and said, like, look, we need to migrate to Kubernetes. Like my partner said, like, okay, why why do you want to migrate to Kubernetes? He said, like, yeah, look, because like people are doing this now, like it's very popular, like uh, it's nice stuff um, to do uh, today. Like um, the partner asked him, like, look, did you have any downtime during the last years? Like he said, like, no, never. Like, why do you want to do it? Like, you know, again, like because like people talk about this hype. And he said, okay, I can do migration for you, like, but it's a very complex work uh, to, to migrate your application from Elastic uh, or like just deploy from scratch in Kubernetes and configure everything in the same way like it works in Elastic. It will cost you this amount of money. Like, and he, you know, he, he set him uh, estimation, like, and the customer was thinking about it. And then finally he said, like, no, 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 no. Look, like, I better save this money, like, for, you know, for my project, for my team, like, let's stay where we are now. So this is a real case from um, from our history, but uh, again, just to emphasize, like it's possible to run um, scalable applications without Kubernetes and Elastic, or like if you like still Kubernetes, uh, you can go with Kubernetes in Elastic and enjoy vertical scaling. I hope it clarifies at least a little bit. Yeah. 
Good. So yeah, any follow-up questions? I think, yeah, I think you did clarify. Uh, there's a question here from Paulo. So I think we, I think I, look, Paulo, I think I, I just got the second part of your question. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you asked in the first one for something, I'm, maybe, maybe the chat kind of missed something here. Because he said, for example, I cannot filter provider certified for the WordPress cluster. So I mean, I think he's asking about ways to figure out the best uh, provider for the last, right? So, so before, I, I, you don't even need to answer this question, Ruslan, because let me tell you one thing, Paulo, uh, you know, if you're looking for a Jalask provider to experiment Jalask and everything, let me tell you. Let me quickly tell you something. I'm, just, I'm even gonna get myself here uh, on maximize here because I need to tell you this. So let me tell you this, this thing. So we're we're doing this whole thing, this whole thing, the whole uh, uh, this whole series here, uh, you know, to help you get more understanding of the cloud and get you, uh, you know, some 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 access to to you know to Ruslan as a good friend of mine. That I, I, I this, this is a guy that knows a lot about the cloud and get you uh, skills, but you know because you guys were asking a lot about your last in the, in the last couple of days, you know I had a meeting with Ruslan yesterday and I said Ruslan, look man, we gotta do something for these guys that are here watching with us, right? So all the people that are here with us, I know they're they are really interested in Jalas, they're really uh, wanting to experiment and like this, and you know I I don't want to just to send them to. Uh, to a web page and say, okay, just go here on a web page and 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 and, and just kind of experiment Jalaski. So I want to do better than that, Ruslan. I said I told I, I had a long, long meeting with Ruslan yesterday. And you know what Ruslan told me? He said, we're gonna do the best thing ever, right? So I was like, whoa, yes, that's what I wanted to hear, Ruslan. So you know, unfortunately Ruslan doesn't have your video, his video right now to to confirm what I just said. But you know, I want you to, if you want to experiment in Alaska, I just want you to wait a little bit, right? Because really, you know, we're going to be working uh, right after we finish this here. I have another meet of Ruslan. We might be working over this over the weekend because I want to have, I want to come back here Monday for our last class. And I really want to come back here with something that's like totally amazing. It's going to blow your guys, all of you guys out of the water uh, because I want you to experiment in Alaska in like in, with, with all the support you need, with all the, the resource you need in an easy way. So that's the thing I'm, I'm working with Ruslan. And, you know, I already told Ruslan, look, Ruslan, I'm, I'm going to give my own training uh, 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 just, just to, for you to do this. You know, like I'm ready to help you. So all of you guys here, right? So, uh, you know, just, just come back on Monday because I don't know the details yet, right? Well, we had a first meeting yesterday. Uh, we had a long discussion. Serge is the guy that's behind the scenes here. And, and, you know, he, he kind of uh, um, uh, suggested all kinds of good stuff. But so if you're looking, Paolo, to filter your, your certified user for WordPress cluster, you know, we're going to do better than that, right? We're, we're going to figure out a way to help you find out the best partner. We're going to work on this with you, Paolo. So I know on Monday, so let you know, just by, by the way, on Monday, actually, let me just kind of get back here. You know, if you're watching this, on uh, on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, and you're not registered, so I suggest you to come here, register for cloudtechdays.com because we're gonna back, be back here on Monday. On Monday, <clears throat> bad luck today. Maybe it's me. Um, <laughs> why? Why do you think so? <laughs> I don't know. If everything was working fine the last three days, maybe something's wrong with me. Yeah. I don't know. Everything was fine, um, but I don't think it's you. Like so, it's technology. <laughs> of course, it's not me. Come on. <laughs> uh, the internet is uh, at, at its limits. I think all over the world at the moment. I think that yeah, the used, it must be crazy. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, like crazy. So you are in Saloniki, it's lockdown now, right? Like till which day, like 30 November? It's, uh, they do November, but I don't think here he is. Bruno, All right. Hello. Okay. So I'll just back. All right. So, yes. So, so that you know, I can't con I couldn't connect to the room. Let me see here. Everyone is here. You guys couldn't. I don't know what happened. Really, I don't know what happened now. All right. Where so, are we? 
I'll be back. It's still here. All right. So yeah, so everyone's still here. They all just connected. Uh, anyway. All right. So what I was, t I was saying, and I'm not sure you guys, how, how far you guys heard me, but just, just want you, what you tell me, all of you, that's Monday. It's going to be awesome because, you know, Ruslan really, really put a lot of effort into this yesterday. Right. So, you know, if you, I'm, I'm not sure what you heard from me, but you know, I really suggest you come back on Monday. So how, how, how far I was when, when they dropped Ruslan? Yeah, you almost finished everything and uh, I, you know, completed your, your work. Like everything is, is fine, like I believe. Okay. Yeah, but then I, I'm not sure if people hear me as well during this time, like because something is going wrong, it looks like with the um, system you're using. Yeah, but maybe it, yeah, because probably they know this is elastic. Yeah, we need to contact the owners. And right. so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, give them, give them opportunity to fix this uh, in a permanent way. Mm, yeah, but um, yeah, definitely it's a make it does make sense to come on Monday and to get uh, super cool, uh, interesting things uh, from us. Like, and you will be able to do it by hands, like not only listening and uh, you know hear uh, and see what we do, but uh, and try by yourself, like learn, like because learning process is not only about listening. You must do some stuff, like your body should learn how to do this. Cool. Yeah, perfect. Good. All right, so I mean, look, guys, I I, I lost all the questions, right? Um, you know, so basically, I think I think you know, if, if there is, I think Google's Miguel is saying, I think Google is boycotting us. So don't, <laughs> so don't say that, Miguel, because now it's on the screen, so the Google algorithm is gonna actually act on it. So oh, right, let's take and remove this down. All right, so uh, um, all right, guys, so look. I just, we just want to go with, with you, whatever questions you have right now. Uh, if there's any questions you want to ask, because, you know, let's, let's get back. Let's, let's restart back on Monday and, and work better on this. Uh, and so, that, so then you, you, you're actually going to be able to, like Ruslan said, you're going to be able to, to play along with us, right? So uh, let's make sure that you, can, that, you, that, you, that you can come, that we can do better. So, Yanis, uh, let, me, let me ask you one thing, man. You know, you... Uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, you're a good Jalask customer. You've been doing a lot of things uh, in Jalask. You said that you have hundreds of containers uh, running running in Jalask and everything. So, uh, you know, what what do you tell you? You told me, right? I said, like, when I try to convince a customer, and and you know, some customers don't listen to me. But you said you you got very very good in showing customers the value of it. So, if you had something to say about Jalask, what would you say? For uh agencies and uh, developers or the clients well whatever right you, you, you tell yeah. yes. well, both say, say one and second like so what do you think yeah. yes. my selling point is a secret it's a it's a secret sauce but okay i'll reveal, <laughs> I'll reveal the, the recipe uh, first of all as i <clears throat> as i said at the beginning related to a digital agency or developers it literally changes completely the the way you work and uh, the bottom line is that it gives you peace of mind and gives you plenty of time to do other things. You don't have to hire someone like a sysadmin expert, so you don't have to spend money on something which is not a full-time job. You don't have to worry about security, you don't have to worry about deployments, you don't have to wor worry about scalability, no matter how big the project is. And you don't have to worry about legacy, and as an, as an agency, because we I'm dealing with the internet process since the 90s. Uh, you understand, we, do, we still have some uh, legacy projects. Unfortunately, but if the client does not want to up upgrade, you have to stick with the uh, legacy projects. And that was another advantage, although it's not a super duper feature. And I know everybody wants to move away from legacy, but I could bring all our projects on the Elastic, no matter what the year of uh, development was. So I still have on our clusters, we do have PHP 5.5. I know it's bad, it's P PHP 5.5, but we do because we have applications either developed by us differently. You have automations for backups within the, the cluster, which is great. If you want to change things, you can do stuff in real time. You discussed about the crisis management and uh, crossing, a system crossing in front of the vice president. I've got a client on Elastic. 
uh, it's an educational platform. So we had one day we had to have online exams of 45 people. That's 45 people paid, paid for this educational program and they had to write the examination on, online. And an update the developers did, not my developers, but a different company, uh, for some reason it started, you know, uh, how do you say it, uh, bringing up lots of workers because they were saving every second all of the questions and answers of every student. So the application server like halted, crashed. And it was an incompatibility with light speed. And in real time, seriously, I rebuilt the whole server in 20 minutes. Everybody waiting. So I set up a new application in Apache. Older version of PHP, just to be sure. That was a trial and error thing. And I managed within 20 minutes, with the help, of course, without the Elastic Partners, to change the IP masking and brought the whole system up online, redeployed on a different server. So that could have been impossible to do on any other solution, okay? And literally saved us because that, that was a three month course and that was an examination day. Think about that. And on top of that, I would say that I have all the projects, either small or big ones. So we may refer about the website for a cafeteria, which is a local store with like 15 visitors per day. And I do use the same platform and the same infrastructure for projects that are publishing platforms with thousands of users. We've got a sports uh, publisher in Greece. They do get eight to 10,000 concurrent users when they've got big football matches. And that for me, it's the same process. It doesn't change. And I know how it works. I know how to handle it. And luckily, I don't have to spend and lose my my sleep if things will work or not. Because as Bruno said, you can just put the horizontal, the vertical scaling, sorry, to the max and not worry about it. So for us, it's a very good investment. It, it was a very good choice I made five years ago. I was worried about the costs and uh, it, it paid off. And when I tried to convince other agencies, one thing that I do show them is they want many agencies that want to build the Magento clusters, okay? And they have no idea how to do it properly. And I demo this and say, look, you can go to Marketplace, you click, I want the Magento cluster, and boom, in five minutes, we got everything working. It just sends you the passwords and it's updated, which is magic. And they go like, what? Yeah. How? Oh. Yeah. So that's one demo I do to other agencies. For the clients, I just highlight things for security, especially ESOPs, high availability. I can do a demo where I can send, shut down one node and they can see their website running, which is crazy. I can do a demo when I up update a simple thing like changing the copyright node on the website just to demo that I can redeploy the project live without having a split second of downtime. And then they start to realize that this thing is different and starts making sense for them. And they are willing to pay more for that, even though sometimes it's more, it's cheaper than the old solution they have. So th there are many, many things. And the last, because I'm using lots of time now, and the last thing for me, which is critical, is the ability, especially with the updates we did, uh, you did with the uh, dockerized containers, uh, Ruslan, to be able to update any node, either MySQL or Lightspeed, Apache, Nginx. I'm referring to those uh, Java guys because I'm using PHP. I'm sorry, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> no problem. No, you're, you're the good guy. There's no problem. No, but... The ability to be able to click and redeploy my application server and upgrade. Apache from 2.440 to 2.442 without having to worry at all. It's amazing. Okay. I'm mainly using Lightspeed the last couple of years. And when a new Lightspeed version is uh, available on Elastic, I just go through my projects, click redeploy, select the latest version of Lightspeed at the latest version of PHP, just wait a couple of minutes and everything is done for me. 
No worries to get backups. No worries if the application will work or not. If for some reason it doesn't work because there is an incompatibility issue, I can just click redeploy again, go back to the previous version, and within two minutes everything is back online. Think, think about that procedure when we used to use dedicated servers. I was a big Debian fan back in the like 15 years ago. I had quite a few dedicated servers unmanaged. I was doing all the managing. And when it was about time to update a major version of Debian, let's say from Debian 4 to Debian 5, I didn't do it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because that was the, the safest option. If you get like 50 websites on a big dedicated server, are you willing to take the risk of updating your core system? No, who, who does that? Even big corporations don't do that. That's why you had all those security issues with Sony and other companies because they had all servers that no one was willing to take the risk to go through the upgrade process. Mm -hmm. And that's with right. Elastic, this is like click. Well, I think that's all for now for me. <laughs> I hopefully convinced you that that's a good solution for us. Probably it's for you guys. And I'm um, urging you to give it a try at least. That's awesome. Man. So, so one thing that you mentioned here was security. And, and there's a question uh, from, from Miguel. But before I go to your question, from Miguel, look, there's one thing you said, uh, Yanis, that I like that I totally agree with is the whole thing about legacy applications, right? And, and look, guys, I've moved a lot of stuff uh a lot of legacy stuff to docker containers for example or to other containers and and there's one thing uh that that kind of gets us crazy is the whole thing about the stateless thing right so, i mean it's, it's some application is just simply not ready to be stateless and we you know the, i know that you, there's a lot of things i mean i do there's a lot of things that we can do with docker uh on this regard and everything but the fact that that elastic actually supports stateful containers right you know it makes like this a breeze for you to migrate legacy things to containers because you know everything in Jelaski is a container so you are using containers you are benefit from all the benefits from containers you actually have extra benefits because you know you can move things around in a lot easier way uh than other container solutions but you still have your whole old legacy thing just kind of just moving it like like yanni said you just get whatever legacy thing you had before and move to the last it simply works right because it's like you know it's it's very similar uh, uh actually there was a customer that said uh, uh you know bruno I, we need to run this 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 software here and you know it's a software we bought uh, uh there's no way we don't have the source code or anything like this we just have to run this stuff here and you know and basically i mean we we run a a a linux container right and just put the software there and just runs. I mean, it's, it's still a container. It's still movable. We can stop and start. We only pay for what we use. I mean, we have all the benefits of container, but it simply it simply gets and run. So I think this is a good thing, uh, um, and and I think that's that's an awesome thing. But there's a question here from uh, uh, from Miguel uh, Ruslan. He says talking about security, some customers needs uh, to audit hardening. So can we achieve that with Jalas? So before Ruslan answers that, let me just repeat this, guys. Monday, right? You know, I twisted Ruslan's arms yesterday, right? You know, he was like, no, I'm not sure. So come on, Ruslan, do more. And he's like, okay, let's do more, right? You know, that's all I like, Ruslan. When he jumps into, he jumps. So Monday, you guys are going to have a huge surprise because we are preparing something awesome for Monday. So we're going to have lots of cool stuff. You know, I, I was just talking about this cool stuff we're going to have on Monday, and then I drop it, but... We're gonna have lots of cool stuff on Monday, and we're gonna have, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take as much as I can out of Ruslan uh, until Monday, right? So come back here to have an awesome surprise for everyone on Monday. So Ruslan, what do you say about Miguel? About security? Uh, you hear me, guys? Yes, we can hear you, yeah. Okay, good. So, um, first of all, thank you, Yanis, for um, emphasizing these benefits. Um, and um, it's, it's really, you know, um, help even for me to see how you know, end customers uh, end product, like, you know, and uh, like you, you named very important things like uh, redeploy, right? I, I even 
to, to mention this today, like honestly, like you know. So, but it's, it's one of the KK features, like um, yeah, like and um, thank you for for this, like and for staying with us for a long time and providing your feedback. Yeah, like and you know, in loyal specifically at the early days because at early days you know sometimes it's difficult to, to implement everything like in uh, in a way like and Bruno helped us a lot uh, actually during the early days as well. So thank you guys for this. I'm I'm, I'm very happy this. Yeah. and um, yeah now uh, talking about okay so, so since uh, Rosan said that let me, let me say let me tell you this you know I I, I I told you that I'm not sure if I was the first but I was definitely one of the first customers using Docker and I was I know I was one of the first using like you know a, a, a lot of file systems kind of things inside of Docker so you know so I got Ruslan crazy and I I know I did help Ruslan by by having all these special cases but let me tell you this. Ruslan and Ruslan team in terms of support. I mean, those guys were awesome. Really, you know, I mean, they they would they would solve problems for me. They would tell me, look, Bruno, you're doing this. I mean, yes, we, we had a mistake in our side, but you're doing this thing wrong. You know, they would look into my my Docker files, they would look at my and my source code, my application, say, Bruno, yes, we had a mistake in our side, but you know, you're doing your wrong things right here. So I mean, they really helping me. Fix a lot of things. So thanks a lot, Ruslan. That was, I mean, that was awesome work that, that, that you guys did. Okay, good. Uh, regarding um, to our hardening, like honestly, like it's not the best area where I can answer the question now. Like, so I'm pretty sure we have team members who can provide very good um, for this one. Like, uh, I don't know, like Yanis, maybe you have. Uh, to say about this, like, how did um, Harding? Regarding security, no, I didn't have any requests for that. Yeah, look, I, I can tell you about security. Like, we have like so many providers, like in so many different countries, and security requirements are different. And you know, they check us from so many different angles. Like, and uh, um, we 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 get reports. Uh, uh, like, you know, some for example, some serious project, I mean, financial one. Like, and they have like. Like they do security audit, like you know, and we already like ten years uh, in production mode. Like, so just imagine how many times uh, security audit was done, and how many customers did it already. Like, so until today, like, uh, I'm so happy we didn't have um, like serious security issues. Like, and customers' um, applications, uh, we cannot uh, guarantee if customers do some best things, right? Uh, but we have tools to prevent the best things, like um, like firewalls, uh, you know. Um, close access to from our side. Um, we have like isolated um, um, networks, um, things that help you to become actually fail to ban. So people, uh, I mean, um, bad guys will not uh, find the um, brute force your password. Let's say. So th th there is a set of uh, things uh, related to security that can improve your security and improve your. We have projects that go through. PC Clients like you know the Iranian on Jelastic. We have really like big financial organizations that run on top of Jelastic. Banks, um, yeah. And um, but regarding your question, like we will involve team and you know try to figure out what what exactly it means for you and uh, provide some answers after. That's awesome, Rosan. That's awesome. So uh, um. So there is a there is a question here from uh, from Paulo, right? No, Paulo made made a comment. He says, you know, we use um, at least ten different languages, mm -hmm. and PHP has definitely its place in this world, right? So yes, it's so so don't worry, Yanis. You know, lots of people, lots of PHP uh, uh, people. I mean, every every time we have here, there's always some always someone that is a PHP developer here. That's awesome, good. So uh, uh, PHP, yeah, like, it, it, it has, it... go ahead across elastic customers like so not some place it's across elastic customers like, right. we have a lot of we have a lot of java guys like you know and started from java but in reality like all hosting industry you know it, it was about php and MS. why it's like this because uh, java was too heavy and was too complex for service providers for services and so java were mostly deployed into bar into virtual machines like it was a very limited number of hosting set of Java. Like, today it's different. Like, there is a Jelastic now. It's 
scale, right? Then some other solutions like buttons. So there are a lot of PHP in the hosting, like, and uh, the most popular system is the uh, CMS is the WordPress. Even you know some people like it, but you cannot deal with it. Like you know, like even if it has some security, it's so it's still amazing um, system like, because there are so many people around it, bigger community, like so many plugins, like stuff easy, like, you know, and doing this in the proper way, like you can get a nice result. Like so, PHP is a great language, like, and Java is a great language, and Node.js is a great language. Like I like JavaScript very much probably like the most you know i can program on languages like I, honestly like there is no religion for, for me <laughs> yeah. that's awesome that's awesome so uh you know uh, we, we we have to get uh going a little in a minute here because i know yanis has this problem that he has to leave otherwise he's going to be stuck for the whole night in the in the office we don't want that happening right we can so, stay here so, is what and the whole weekend, probably. Oh, the whole weekend, right? Yeah, because today's Friday, so we, yeah, we don't we don't want Yanis stranded in his office for the whole weekend. We have, right? we have to keep the link live and keep me company until Monday. Okay, you right, stay no, here. No, 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 no. So we don't, we definitely don't want that. So, so you know, so Yanis, if you if you need to leave, let us know. But you know, Miguel is saying here, Ruslan, I got a special case here. I have a different environment. In some moments, I would need to communicate some database from one environment to another one. Can I do that like through a, through a, a, a local air network, or do I have to jump through the internet? I'm thinking about communications performance, right? So I mean, we do have. So Rosen, I think I think that's 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 fairly easy, right? Because I I, I know that we have some case where we have a database in one environment that is accessed by 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 applications in different environments. So that's that should be fine, right? I do it mm -hmm. all the time. So <laughs> yeah, so there is a possibility. To uh, there is a possibility to um, isolate your environment so no, one environment will not be able to talk to another one, as uh, well as possibility to bring these environments into the same environment group, have access to each other. Like so, it's possible. Like, and I do recommend to use multiple environments because then you can have some flexibility. You can apply. Um, we have um, for um, time redeployment actually traffic distributors. That's the name. Like so, we have like traffic distribution when you can put in front of one environment, you know, and then like a little bit and move traffic to another environment. See how it behaves. Like you know, if you again like if you learn how to deal with multiple environments, like, you get so nice level of flexibility. It's like third dimension of scaling, like, because first one is vertical, second one is horizontal, and one is like environments and this topology. Like so, if you are just like then, then you reach very high level. Yanis, you want to do it? Yeah, there are many ways to do it. You can do it as uh, Ruslan described. Initially, I had everything in one environment, and then I started separating it just in case of flexibility. So it's a play and go. You see what fits your needs and what makes sense to you. But uh, you can definitely communicate one environment to another or databases and you can transfer easily files without having to go through the internet and of course it's extremely fast if you do it locally with local addresses yeah, yeah. the private network so actually yeah. they connected through uh, private network uh, it's secure transfer. and extremely fast so it's even better than simple LAN because it's well at least the provider i'm using is extremely fast all right, that's cool. So then, uh, last question I see here. So Paulo is, is is so Paulo is already trying to to get this thing going, man. I can see this, right? He's saying I'm playing with various providers' pricing calculators, right? And I see some charge for egress traffic and others not. So everyone can choose their own pricing model. That's his question. But look, Paulo, let me tell you this, man. You gotta wait till Monday because I'm we're gonna do an awesome thing on Monday. You know if. If I can get Ruslan to sign off what he, he we discussed it yesterday, he's still evaluating his, with his team to see if he can just sign this off. If we can get him sign this off, you're gonna you, you're gonna regret uh, to not waiting for Monday. So wait till Monday, Paulo, because we're gonna have an awesome thing for you now and everyone else. Black Friday, Black Friday, Black Friday Monday. It's, it's yeah, it's gonna be a Black Friday week. How about Black let's Friday let's do a Friday. Ruslan, can we do a Black Friday week? We start on Monday and end on Friday. How about this, Ruslan? 
Yeah, so, sounds like a good idea. Let's 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 put right. this together with the team. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> okay, Bruce, Bruce Lemon is going to come out of this call and he's going to give me a call and say, Bruno, why are you promising? Are you crazy? Yes, all right, yeah, we're crazy know. here today, guys. We're totally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we are totally crazy here. So, so yes, uh, okay, guys, so Paul is, is laughing here. All right, okay, so Paulo, let me tell you this. Uh, um, you know, so, I mean, Ruslan, what do you think? Every every provider has their own pricing model. Uh, yeah, like so, so provide freedom of choice. Like we don't force anyone to specific um, pricing. Like, and there is a specific reason behind it. Like, look, we like they are managing structure. Like, we can um, help them to provide the better services, right? And we can emphasize they have, but we want them to be independent. Like. Decide like which infrastructure to use, uh, the pricing for this infrastructure, what kind of additional services they have to provide. So they have very nice flexibility. Like we have guidelines, uh, like say best practices, but there is a freedom of choice. And definitely, like some providers, uh, sell, uh, some providers provide it for free. Um, there are many. Um, we have a catalog you can see and check, like provide what. Please pay attention, like so. Um, there is a big difference, you know, like uh, between cost. Right. But there is a specific reason, like, so, um, for example, in one country is much more expensive than in another, right? Like, so, and you need to see the center located way. Like, for example, uh, Sweden is a very expensive country, like, so, but they are like, um, cost a lot of money. Uh, comparing, it's like, I, don't, I will not name it, but still. Uh, and also, like, pay attention quality of services like because I just offer you um, a self-managed service like like a panel you cannot expect um, a price for them or like extra managed services because the, it's not what they do the best and we have like clear mark like so like for example, support quality is like four or support quality is five stars or even like three stars three stars quality but Infrastructure, maybe people don't need the uh, quality. Maybe looking for you know to run some like so. It's, it's still possible. No, um, yeah, that's like and check check about performance. Check about additional things you do. You know, like uh, everything matter like here. Um, yes, like it, at some point you can say like, ah, eh, it's too complicated to choose. Like, man, but it's good to have a choice. Honestly, like so. Start from location, which is what I recommend. Like so, if you are living in a specific country. Try to choose from providers uh, around you. Like and you will speak the same language, you will have the same quality. You you can even call like and get a special discount like from your provider, right? Like so, but we have choice like and the choice will grow like like so. Yeah. All right, that's awesome. And by the way, look, I I love the, everything that Ruslan is talking about choice, right? Because you know many years ago. I wrote a blog post for Jalaski, right? I'm not sure if you remember that, that blog post, Ruslan, but I wrote I a blog post for Jalaski that talks exactly about choice, right? And look, the thing that, before I met Ruslan, the thing that really drew me to Jalaski, I'm like, man, this is, the, this is awesome, is the whole idea that Jalaski is not a cloud provider. Right? That's crazy, right? We talk, I mean, we've been talking here the whole week about clouds, and we're talking with a, with a company that is not a cloud provider, right? Because Jalaski creates the software. And then all of those partners, they're actually the cloud providers. And I think this is awesome, right? Because this whole idea that the whole world is going to be centralized in one single cloud provider that's going to dictate all the rules, I think this is com this very complex, very dangerous. When, you know, when I started the cloud, that was like, man, you know, are we really going to give all the power in the whole planet for, for like this two, three, four companies, right? Or we can can we spread this out in lots of companies? And the fact that Jalaski has, uh, uh, you know, uh, partners everywhere. So you know there are partners in Brazil. There's multiple partners in Brazil, right? So you no. Know, so the, the fact that I can deal with different companies and I can I can talk with different companies with different different ideas, different rules, different pricing, you know, all of these is awesome because it creates a, a, a competition, it creates a collaboration, it creates choice, right? So Ruslan, really, 
you know, if, if there is one thing that draws me to Jalaskis from the very start is this, right? You know, I'm all for choice. Thank so you. Yeah, why we're doing cool. here, right? Miguel, yeah, Miguel is actually saying here, right? Oh, I just saw the magic in the firewall section, allowing one server from India to see another server from US. Not really sure how he does. Right? I'll do some tests. All right. So Miguel is already making this whole thing happen. That's awesome, man. That's great. <laughs> It's, it's a magic, <laughs> but it's simple magic for in customers. Yeah. yeah, it's not magic; it's technology, right, Ruslan? Technology, exactly. The technology magicians, you know. <laughs> right, right. All right, okay, guys. So I think I think we're gonna get 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 to the end of this right now. Uh, you know, just just want to remind you guys again that on Monday, right? On Monday, we're gonna have. You know, vendors. Uh, um, oh, so Samuka is saying, uh, do, do my like and and in, in my presence here in Portuguese, right? Thanks, Bruno. So thanks, Samuka. Great, great to have you here, man. That's awesome to be to be around with you. So uh, um, actually, let me just a little Portuguese in the screen, right? How about this? That's great. So thanks, Samuka. Awesome that you that the Brazilians are here. Um, okay, so um, you know. Just remind, just just a quick remind to you that on Monday we have more cloud content. Uh, you know, we're gonna bring. You know, how how can you transform your SaaS model? So if you're if you're a service, uh, you know, uh, um, a software as a service company, uh, and you want to transform your model, uh, we can show you how you can do this uh, with Jalask on Monday, right? We also gonna have real use case of multi cloud deployments. The whole thing about choice we're talking about here, you're gonna see live demos. Of, of multi cloud uh, deployment on Monday. And we're also going to have a live demo on how to install WordPress, Kubernetes, set up scheduling, traffic distribution, DB cluster. All of those things are going to show you uh, uh, on Monday uh, live how to do this. And, and, you know, over the weekends, you know, look, we're not going to stay here more time because Yanni is going to have to stay here the whole weekend with us. But over the weekend, I'm gonna sit down personally with Ruslan again, right? And we're gonna nail down a great gift for all of you guys that have been here with us all this time. Uh, we're gonna get, you know, we're gonna figure out uh, Gelast pricing. We're gonna figure out a good deal. We're gonna figure out how you can get our support to go implement that stuff, right? So no, we're gonna figure out a, a good thing for you guys. Uh, and you know, I'm already putting, I, I, I'm already putting my own. Uh, career and skill training into the package. We're gonna we're gonna make an awesome package for you. So next week we're gonna do a Black Week, right? You know, I forgot the, that 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 next week is Black Friday. I thought it was Black Friday was like end of the month, but it's already end of the month, right? Next next week is the last week of the month. I didn't realize that. Okay, so so we're gonna do Black Week next week, right? Actually, we should have done this event next week, so we would end. On a Friday, but we didn't we didn't notice that. So we're gonna end on a Monday, and then we're gonna move. We're gonna do a whole week, Black Week. Man, Ruslan's gonna kill me. <laughs> we will, we, we will right, close guys. It's okay, no problem. Yeah. Good guys. Yeah, Thank you very much right. again, like for attending. And Yanis, I do appreciate uh, that you spent your time, valuable time, because we know we know like time is the most important. Like so. Thank you for, for your great words. Like thank you for staying. So long time, and I hope to see not 200 uh, environments like 2,000 environments uh, in let's say in the future. Yeah, exactly. So it means right. business will grow. Like man, you business will grow. You will get you know better recognition from you know uh, community and custom, more customers. Like so, I wish you good luck and wish you fast growth. Joy will back you uh, while I'm scaling. Thanks a lot for the invitation, uh, Ruslan and Bruno. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and it's great. Right look, Greece. Look, Greeks. Greece is on my list, right? So you know, I gotta, I gotta go. I have a good friend, Heinz Kabutz, uh, that lives in Greece, right? You know, I got now you that lives in Greece. I gotta figure out, how, Ruslan, how do I, how, how do I, how do I go do an event in Greece, right? We gotta figure this out. <laughs> Why not? We can help. We, we, we went in Greece, like man, like so. Yeah, Brazil, <laughs> Brazil is on my list as well, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. All right. So now, thanks everyone. Thanks, Yanis. Thanks, Ruslan.